Hey guys, Tarnip here bringing you a 1v1 today. We're on Vushanka. Playing today spawning on the left. We have Tien playing as OKW. We Scavenge. We're off for ground forces and breakthrough. From the right we have Stormjäger as US forces. Straight away locking in to Mechanized. OKWC 51 out. Capping. In terms of rankings here, Tien around rank 30, Stormjäger around rank 15. Crank it up. Not quite enough munitions for the machine gun yet. Did prioritize, you know, capping that muni point pretty early on, so they will be coming through shortly. A bit of wire off on the uh, fuel point here as well. Stall from inside the building with the stern pies. Another squad of Rathman arriving. Two on one now. There goes the stern pies. Nice early retreat. Cal is upgrading on the uh, WC 51 there. Comes in, I think, trying to do a little bit of blocking with that, but doesn't really amount to much. And the rear echelon getting off to a decent start on this one, but they're about to start dropping models like crazy. Got another rifleman coming in from Stormjäger as well, so it's going to delay his officer tick by a, a bit. See how that shakes out. WC-51, you know, used to be really popular, but doesn't have the vehicle crew anymore. Haven't really seen it too much as of late. Some new grenade out. Both players trying to either decap or prevent the decap, but Stormyag ends up winning that one. And OC51 in here doing some pretty big damage. It's a really good DPS on this gun. So even though it's quite fragile, I think it has more damage than the uh, M20 does. Okay, breakthrough activated by Tien, coming in for a decap on the fuel point, trying to get that going as fast as possible. But doesn't have enough firepower in the north. Did only go for three squads before tech. Looks like maybe trying to save their officer, but not quite there on the command points yet. But you know, Outback doing quite a lot of decap, and you do decap so quickly when breakthrough is active. In uh, ultimately winning these engagements. Going for tech. Not quite there for the officer still. Just hitting two command points, but doesn't have the manpower for that at the moment. And that's often like the issue with these kind of fast tech OKW strategies. You know, you invest a lot of manpower into boosting up your battle group. And it ultimately means you have less troops on the field. Fight back against your opponent. Which is why it's pretty hard as OKW to play anything other than four Fox Grenadiers or three Fox and a Jaeger Light since they come in at one command point and quite a lot earlier than two. Maybe Tien though gonna go straight for the flak half track. He hasn't spent his manpower yet. But yeah, this uh, WC-51 really torching them at the moment. And there we go. Okay, flak half track in the works. But you know, by the time it hits the field because he lost control of his fuel for such a long time, it's actually not going to be that much faster than like a standard 4 folk screen to build. I've tried a lot of these builds myself and maybe there'd be like 20 seconds or so difference. That's what I felt most of the time. It's because you know, you're so much weaker. Too much shooting at the building there. Still, this retreating squad, I believe. And, you know, Storm Jaeger going for a build that kind of capitalizes on Tien's slow opening. 
you know, going for that OC-51. And then the extra squad of riflemen as well. A lot of pressure in the early stages. And, you know, flak up tracks on the field now, but... What's the 6 minutes 30? Which is close to a regular flak half track timing anyway. And now a Stuart coming in for Stormjäger, you know. The super strong territory control allowing for this and also doing very good on the KD because of that OC-51 already up to VET-2 on that. has been doing a huge amount of damage so far. And it's only got three kills, you know, it just softens up the troops. Maybe the Rathman end up actually guessing the kills counted towards them. Do an ambulance Ready back here as well for Stormjäger. So to have this many one. squads, a Stuart and an Ambo at this timing, very, very efficient play so far. Got a rifle squad inside the OC-51. Maybe Stormjäger looking to go for a bit of an all-in. Go for the kill on the flak half-track. We've got the Rakitin coming in now for Tien. And you know, honestly, with Tien's build, I wouldn't be opposed to just going for the three folks Rakitin and then the flak half-track as well. So like a lot of OKW players are reluctant. Oh, here we go. We're holding my thought. Stepping on it. Rifleman anti-tank grenade coming through. Squad of uh, Rifleman did go down for Stormjager though, while he's trying to execute this move. And here comes the Rakitin. Connects once. Maybe could take down the WC-51 as it pulls back here. We've got a squad of Falks Grenadiers. Nope. Not looking for that opportunity. Just trying to get out of there alive. So you can see how fast that is. He uses the speed boost. Allows him to charge in and get the snare off. Raketon arriving. It's a little bit too late to really uh, save the day. And that's it. Especially with the flak half track, you know, it does require quite a bit of support. It can be quite easy for it to get caught out of position. But yeah, I was going to say, I feel like a lot of Wicked Obi players are reluctant to get an early Rakesson against, you know, like a WC-51, M3A1, Universal Carrier, but I, th I think it's alright. Those like vehicles can uh, inflict so much bleed, and you know you're gonna need a kidney at some stage, especially in these one v ones. Most players will go for two light vehicles if they're gonna go for one of those ultra lights as well. So you don't have to wait long before you can get value out of it again. And in the case of a kitten, you know once it's maybe killed your opponent's light vehicle, if it has or assuming no, not guaranteed to, but assuming that it has. You can then just send it out to do back capping, capping on the map since it can retreat. Okay, Stormjäger making a bit of a push here. Trying to avoid taking a Faust though, got a squad there, but so has to disengage from this. He's gonna take a Faust as he backs away. Could even maybe wait for the Fox Reindeer Faust to come off cooldown. We have a 50 cal coming in. Oh, and Rakitin's going to go for that. WC-51. Oh, miss! Oh, heartbreaker for Tien. He's trying to get in there, but he doesn't actually have the munitions for a Faust at the moment. Squad in some trouble. Tien should get away. No munis, though. No munis. Oh, boy. Definitely could have killed those 51 probably could have killed the Stuart looks like he popped out of that down here did a emergency repair so both of them get away alive heartbreaker 14 it's gone for the uh, officer to bolster his strength at this timing personally I'd probably be looking to get my tier 4 down because, you know, you're up against double light vehicles. If you can get your tier 4 down covering your cutoff and your fuel point, they can buy you uh, 
a safety zone against your opponent's light vehicles. And uh, the officer, you know, it's, it's all right, but it does generally require quite a lot of munitions to get the most out of it. And in, at this late of a timing, you know, it's coming in with a reasonable vet disadvantage. So we might as well just go straight for the Obus, I would say. Go for, you know, better overall late unit. But maybe Tien's going to show us a masterclass on how to make use of this officer. But the double 50 cows now from Storm Jaeger looking to solidify his position. Stuart chasing away troops from this far side. Trick on these stern powers, keeping the WC-51 honest, but they're a little bit too low now. They end up losing to the lieutenant. Oh, one raquette and connecting on the Stuart. Oh, maybe lost sight there. Uh-oh. Stuart looking for the kill now on the machine gun. And gets it. You know, he's clumped up on that cover. Oh, oh. Oh, oh, it doesn't have the munis for a Faust again. Oh, but... Wow! I did not expect the Rakitin to get a second shot off there. Down goes the Stuart. Okay, well that is much better for Tien. Thought he was... Well, that Stuart was getting away there for sure. Alright, well... Good news for Tien. Black gun about to complete on the Shreya Panzer headquarters. Could be the end of these rear echelon. Let's say Storm Jaeger got a little bit lucky. But may still go down anyway with a road in the retreat path. And does. Have to be very careful, you know, that flak gun. Sometimes I see it like <laughs> knock out four models in like two hits. Have to be really, really careful. You might really want to make sure, like, okay, this is worth it. If I go for this decap or capture point right now, or be so confident that they don't have enough resources that they can go for that upgrade. It's yeah, very easy to lose a squad to that. As it completes the upgrade. Fifty-one, just being used more on the flanks. For capping now. Not really getting used in head to head combat too much, but now with the Sturmpai Shrek and the Rakitten. Castle Grenade coming out. We do have some squads coming in from the sides, so Storm Yang get playing it safe, hidden the retreat. Let's take weapon racks now. Going to equip bars on most of his troops. Going to help him go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the STG Folk Screeners, which are also fully upgraded at this stage. And a second Raketen for Tien feels that he's quite far behind. And uh, expecting a medium tank from Storm Jaeger in short order. Going to go for a second Raketen to help defend against that. No, Storm Yaeger has spent more fuel overall. Stuart more expensive. Oh boy, that's a bad retreat path for that Sturm <laughs> What is that? Oh my god. That is one of the worst retreats I've ever seen. Wow. Breakthrough activated again as he dives on to the fuel point. And the VP. Under pressure though. MG. Just out guns. Didn't want to take the risk and understandable. Probably wouldn't have worked out. But yeah, Sherman on the field now. 
tier no pretty well prepared with the double anti-tank guns and the trick on those stern pyros Ooh, this is always the thing with Phil Shanky, you know these roads so, so much negative cover on this map compared to most in the 1v1 rotation these days big damage on retreat big white No attack round action there from Tien. Not fancying his chances. Trying to run through the smoke instead. And Sherman gets away very easily because of that. Definitely needed the attack round. But good smoke from Storm Jaeger. Good reaction times on that. Oh. Faust connecting. Needs to keep pace. Do a little bit more small arms damage. Oh, a bit of blocking from the 50. And that's the end of the WC-51. Light vehicle just got destroyed. Tim's got to be happy about that. That thing was a real nuisance. And, you know, maybe could have called in the artillery that it has. At these stages of the game. Could be pretty nasty. Dropped on top of the Rakesans, for example. If I remember rightly, that uh, artillery does come down pretty quickly. It's on the WC-51. from behind heavy cover going to town there. 10 very close to his own tank. And here comes a major artillery forcing the pack up. Opportunities though coming from the bottom. Oh there's a big shot from the Sherman. It's gone very low after that. Still alive though. And Sherman took two hits, has to back away for repairs again, so maybe got off to a somewhat promising start, helping the chase down and wipe of that retreating fault screen there, but since then has really been limited in what he can do with the Sherman. And he's about to take a Faust. No, Faust gets interrupted by that big shot. And now the folks screen is at risk of going down. Tom Yager playing it very safe and doesn't want to chase any further. And fair enough, two Rakitans are very close by. Panzer 4 in the works. Do have the breakthrough active again, but not really gaining any territory with that at the moment. Or decapping any territory with it at least. Jäger having ticked the second officer, got the anti-tank gun out himself. We just got ourselves a field promotion. You know, if you're a little bit further ahead as a US player, maybe you go for like a second medium tank, either second Sherman or the Jackson, but Storm Jäger, I suppose probably could have gone for a second Sherman, but second Jackson would probably be too far away. Panzer 4 could do quite a lot of damage in the meantime, so. Thanks for the officer. I think, uh, you know, especially if you'd lost like one more squad, maybe you're going for the officer also can be pretty helpful, just an extra squad to do some capping. But only lost that one uh, rifle so far. Good damage onto the Sherman. In one out the back, but hasn't popped the APM. Oh, Storm Jaeger. You cook everything with mass bars. A little bit long munitions right now. Maybe trying to play a little bit more conservatively. So we're getting some nice pins anyway. Getting really lucky with those pins. My word. Activates the APM and the take aim right at the end there. Hoping for one last shot. Doesn't come through though. Storm Jaeger with boatloads of manpower at the moment. Just have a lot of reinforcing to do, but plenty in reserve after that even. Force retreat on one of the machine guns, the other one also under some pressure. 
Sebastian still quite far behind on the VPs, but seems to have stabilized quite nicely. Second Sherman for Storm Jaeger. So, you know, with the addition of the anti tank gun, he feels like. No, he's going to cancel that and go for a second anti tank gun. Couple anti tank guns. That's the way these days. Maybe he's probably, I will guess, going to go for the Scott next. Scott being so effective these days. And TM pretty heavily invested in support weapons, double machine gun, double anti tank guns on both sides. So. Scott should be pretty effective against those. And with the support of the second anti tank gun, should be able to keep it safe a little bit more effectively, especially given that he doesn't have any mines available in his commander, no Ruffman field defenses. To help keep the Scott safe in that department with the mines. Backfiring on that side of the sandbags. No, nope. oh, that can work. Slightly lever retreat nonetheless for Storm Jaeger. Sherman heading up in this direction. And there it goes. Sherman's on high explosive mode as well. Has a four misses, so that squad has to give up on the Faust attempt. Accidentally running a squad into. Uh, the flak base there. Big damage from the double anti tank guns though. Now the Panzer IV is the one in some trouble. Already used the blitz it looks like. Down it goes. So Storm Jaeger kind of trying to bait and uh, works out nicely Tien. Losing the Panzer IV there. And it looks like Storm Jaeger going to go for a second Sherman after that. You know, if, if uh, Tien still had one Panzer IV and maybe, you know, about to produce a second, going for the Scott makes more sense, you know, it's safer, a more long-range option, but if it's two medium tanks against zero, you know, generally you can just drive right on top of the double anti tank guns and decrew them, especially with HT e. Sherman. Very high damage. So maybe that's the plan for Storm Jaeger now. Doesn't really need to play quite... Such a conservative long game type style after knocking out that Panzer IV. Because of his strong position. Smoke out. Gonna go for the capture behind this. Tina's getting a little bit low on the VPs. Doesn't have an angle. Missing its shot. And going for another attack round there, even though it maybe could have landed a regular attacking shot on that Sherman. Storm Jaeger really turning up the pressure. Poking his head around with all these Sherman tanks. It almost seemed crazy, but I wonder if a uh, IR searchlight might be like decent in this scenario. I feel like one parked around here would just give a huge amount of sight. Storm Jaeger would have a huge amount of trouble just doing anything on the whole like bottom side of the map with that kind of positioning. Don't see them too often, but I feel like it could be a reasonable reasonable go on this kind of situation okay and that is some really good shooting from those double shermans extremely quick d d crew on the uh mp34 the double kittens there and the anti tank gun though taking care of that d crew weapon so quickly The uh, officer does have a lot of sight range as well. 50 sight. Oh no. I think Tien just A moving that. Tien moving that. We're getting forwards and ends up getting a D cruise. A little bit clumsy from him there. 
usually a sign that you're getting uh, overwhelmed when some when the player like this caliber makes that kind of mistake. Still yeah, get capitalizing on that. Double Ames tank guns coming in now as well. Finishing off the decrypt with Kid, and he's getting really good luck with these team weapon hits. If the anti tank guns like max range, usually they miss a lot more than that, but Storm Jaeger running hot on that regard. Now the shim is missing though. The anti tank gun though. And that has popped out for Tien, but ooh, the amount of damage he's taken over the last three minutes is going to be very hard to come back from this. We're off to a good start though, Panther coming in. And there goes one Sherman. Looks like he's in some trouble on retreat, but everything's suppressed, so it looks like it's going to get away alive. Into tank gun under pressure from the officer. Oh, and then the Sherman going down, getting sniped off at close to max range. No smoke that time from Storm Jaeger. Panther trying to go for the kill. Too many squads nearby though. Jumps back on top of that gun. So that was a good counter punch from Tien though. Both the Sherman tanks going down. Decra on the anti tank gun. You know, got, got rid of the veterancy on it at least. Small win. But uh, still, still has a long way to go to uh, rebuild. Probably going to need... Yeah. A long way to go for Tien, and uh, he's running along the VPs. It's going to be a hard ask. Looks like Storm Jaeger going to go for a 76 mil Sherman. Bit of extra anti-tank firepower on that. Lieutenant went down some... Oh yeah, that's right, that was in the north. Turning up that VP pressure, triple cap on Tien. He's off the field, reinforcing everything. Tank support is here. Sherman ready. Panther runs straight into the double anti tank guns. A capture point is being That's overrun. That's retreat, and Tien coming out with a low health unit just to do some capping on the safe side. Heavy machine gun team Officer getting a bit of a flank going on this 50 cal, but 76 mil arrives in time to shut that down. And heading down this direction, but the double anti tank gun still camped very close to the center. Kind of hard to avoid. And for misses his first shot as well. Smoke out. I think that's a good idea for Tien, who's actually floating a lot of manpower right now. Not sure what he's aiming for. Mass support weapons are just giving him so many headaches at the moment. But this kind of float is not a good sign. As I said, I you know I don't hate an IR searchlight. Probably could do with an anti-tank gun as well. Even though the Panther does match up very well against Senior System Sherman, just maybe the Panther took too much damage from the double anti-tank guns, so need that backup anti-tank option from the anti-tank gun. But, uh, yeah, I don't know what Tien's doing here at all. Still quite a lot of fuel away from another tank, and he's draining out on VP so quickly. Probably not going to get a chance to... Maybe you can start production on one, but probably won't hit the battlefield by the time he's finished draining out on the victory point clock. Got enough munis though for the assault artillery, so maybe that's his big plan. Remaining. Here comes the assault artillery. Managed to call this in relatively deeply. Right on top of all the support weapons. Panther coming in from the north, spotted by the 50 cal though. It's take quite a while before the shells start to land. Maybe we can force this rifle squad into retreating past it. One of the 50 cals decreed, the other one actually taking. Oh no, what, what is that? 
Yeah, that is a 50k. Three 50k. I didn't even notice the third one. Trying to go for the cap behind this. A lot of smoke. He's got a squad in the north. Activating breakthrough for the fast decap. MG going for the capture, but oh boy. Forced away by the double anti tank guns. 50 cal blocking the capture over here. Stempire is about to get suppressed. And TM throwing in the towel. So yeah, I think the decisive blow was uh, that Panzer IV going down to the double anti tank guns up there in the north. Tien really struggling. He'd fought himself back into a close to even position. But once that Panzer IV went down, he was really down the dumps. Still very strange. You know, he floated such a lot of manpower over the last five minutes or so. Definitely not the best. As I said, I, I think I would like to see an IR searchlight, honestly. Would have helped avoid the support weapon spam from Stormjager very nicely on this map. Bit of a shame we didn't get to see that, but oh well. As for Stormjager, you know, getting off to a very strong start with that WC-51. I think Tien's build, you know, three squads, fast tech, fast flak half track, really got hard punished by Stormjager's strategy. More early offensiveness with the uh, WC-51. And uh, as a result, that flak half track came out at pretty close to regular timing. So... The build order for 10 didn't really work out. And yeah, as I said, I'm, I'm a bit more of a fan of going for an early Rakitin to deal with those early uh, light vehicles. But I know some players are not. And you can definitely get away with not, not going for them if you play correctly and play from cover, blob, focus them down with small arms fire. But it didn't seem to work out that well in this game for 10. Anyway, GG. Wrap on that, guys. If you like your game to be cast by me, details are in the video description below. Otherwise, I'll catch you off to the next thrilling installment. Goodbye and good luck.